Jamie was a father, a son, a brother, and a friend to so many who are going to miss him and remember him over the years. Jamie was born in Brunswick, Maine on December 5th in 1970, and it was a short time before his fun and outgoing personality was taking shape and winning hearts over. He had a heart of gold and would do anything for anyone at any time. You'll hear lots more about this in the stories shared at the Celebration of Life held for Jamie on November 20th. Jamie watched out for his younger brothers, and they looked up to him with love and admiration. Many of these adorable photos capture that brotherhood in many close family memories. Jamie lived in Yarmouth, Maine for his first 16 years, and then moved to Bodenham, where he graduated from Mount Ararat High School and Region 10 Technical School, where he took welding classes and received an award for the best welder in his class. His first job in his new trade was at Bath Ironworks, known then as Gowan Marine. He went on to become a certified pipe welder and worked at several companies doing stainless steel welding over the years. Jamie loved anything and everything that had a motor. It didn't matter if it had skis, wheels, or floated, and it didn't matter if he was riding them or fixing them. He enjoyed them. In 1995, Jamie met Melissa Roy, who would be the woman in Jamie's life until he died. They made many memories in those early days, spending time at camp, Jamie teaching Melissa how to ride a crotch rocket, and things like that. They became parents to Colby Ann Moore Brown on April 30th, 1999. The years following were a mixture of good times and bad times, and their off and on again relationship continued throughout the years, though they always remained friends through thick and thin. On Easter Sunday, 2001, Jamie had a serious dirt bike accident in which he was life flighted to Central Maine Medical Center and was resuscitated three times. He broke multiple bones and serious damage was done to his back, leaving him in a back cast for about a year. Six months after his accident and still in his back cast, Jamie, being Jamie, did a wheelie down his driveway. There was just no holding him back from what he loved. The accident changed Jamie's life and left him in constant pain. And despite that, he was a hard worker and continued helping others. He lit up a room when he walked into it and easily connected to others with his sincere interest in people and events. He was a great person to be around and those who knew him loved him. Jamie loved Kid Rock, and this just wouldn't be a Jamie tribute without blasting his favorite Kid Rock song, Born Free.
Jamie wasn't without his demons, and as it frequently happens to those with chronic pain, becoming dependent on pain medication can lead to unhealthy choices. Self-medicating became a way of coping for Jamie, leading to poorer and poorer health. But despite that, as you will hear in the stories to come, even through his difficult last years, Jamie never lost his ability to connect with others, win hearts over, and help those who needed help. Coming up next are some heartwarming and funny stories told at the celebration of life for Jamie. It was held at Ruth and Bruce's beautiful lake home in Emden, Maine on November 20th. It was a relaxing and peaceful Saturday afternoon with great food, people, and memories. He's in the house one day and he goes, and he's crying. He goes, I didn't mean to break it. And I said, what'd you break? I didn't mean to break it. So what'd you do? He's like, I took my wagon apart and I can't put it back together. <laughs> How old was he? He was three. <laughs> but he learned from that moment on how to fix sure anything. He, <laughs> he did. <laughs> he could fix so, anything after that. That's my quick fun story. Well, that <laughs> is the, and I'm going to be real quick with this, but Jamie had a unique ability. That's why we nicknamed him MacGyver. He could fix anything and if he didn't know how to fix it and he wasn't high techy but he'd get us to look at on youtube for him or some of his other friends and he'd come up with a way to fix something it didn't matter whether it was a snowmobile dirt bike motorcycle boat car he would he would fix it and as some of you know he didn't he didn't have two nickels to rub together but he knew he would drop whatever he was doing to fix something that one of you or one of his friends might have that needed to be fixed, Amen. And, and that was yeah, that Amen. was the guy that I knew, and he had this unique ability. One, he, he had ESP. If we were having lobster at camp, <laughs> he just showed up. Okay, and so it, 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 was, it was my my job to make sure there were enough lobster because I knew Jamie was going to show up. We didn't even have to ask him; he would show up. The second thing is, if I was making my haddock or fish chowder, fish chowder. yeah, he he, it was it was no doubt he was going to be there. And the thing that I <laughs> am going to miss dearly, and something that uh, brings sadness and happiness, is that he knew when I needed help, okay? He, he would appear on site and he says, you need a hand with this? I need, I'm gonna help you with this or that. And Jamie was the man, uh, a legend in his own right, that was there to help his mom and I. And we were very blessed to have him in our life for as long as we did and be able to do things with him and I'm just, just be part of what was going on. Just this year. Bruce had to call and say, I can't get my motorcycle started. Jamie, come over. Help me. And he would. <laughs> he did. Yeah, might be a little late, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Yes.
On behalf of Ruth and I and anybody else, we, we, we thank you for being here. And we want you, after Arthur and Karen are finished, to come up and just, whether you do it from standing there or if you want, don't want to come here in, fr in front of Jamie's things, and as you know, his ashes are here in the in the yeah. Harley uh, replica. Beautiful. Yeah, and we just, we miss him and we love him. So, Dad, his real dad. <laughs> Since Jamie moved up here, I really didn't have much time to spend with him as far as memories. Uh, there was one I remember, Jamie and Crazy Ken and Bruce and I met and we went on a motorcycle ride and yeah. I, I'll never forget that. Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. I, uh, uh, yeah. The thing I remember with, um, I haven't been back in Jamie's life as long, you know, he's in it a long time ago and back again, but what is smart. What impressed, what impressed me was um, we had a lot of trouble with our new house that's been built up on the mountain and um, they messed up our deck and Jamie and John and Justin and they all came up and and I couldn't believe how strong Jamie was for having his back the way hurt the way he was he was so strong he just got right in there and we really appreciated it he did help that's always Greg has some fond memories well you know I have a lot of fond memories of Jamie. I grew up with Jamie Basie in Yarmouth, um, Arthur in Yarmouth, and we, we, I have some great memories, and I really don't know where to start. I mean, I, I, it's kind of a collage of memories in my head that I can remember with Jamie. And when we were younger, we were almost like brothers, you know, for about a 12, 13 year span. We were always together. Um, I can tell you a quick bunch of different ones. I can remember I used to go to the Yarmouth Clam Festival on a regular basis, a big highlight during the summer. And Jamie said to me, I'm going to go on that zipper. I said, yeah, let's go on the zipper. I have no problem with that. So we went on the zipper together, and he decided he was, this ride went real fast. And he wanted to make it go as fast as possible. Well, he had made the mistake before getting on the ride, he had some fried dough. <laughs> so he decided he was going to make this zipper go really fast. Well, he got a little scared, he got a little sick, and I was the beneficiary of the, <laughs> of the dough. And I remember after we got off, off the ride, there was the big thing in Yarmouth, you wanted to go up to the water district and jump off the trestle. Well, I never wanted to do it, but having Jamie's fried dough on it, <laughs> I decided I got to get in the water. I got to do something about this. It's got a long night ahead of me at the Yarmouth Clam Festival. So we jumped in the Royal River and got cleaned off and went back down to the to the Clam Festival. And um, I can remember those years very fondly. I tell my wife about them, my kids about them. Um, it was, you know, Moosehead Lake, we used to go camping every summer for two weeks. Um, we used to go dirt biking together. Jamie had a, a dirt bike, and it didn't have brakes. And I said, geez, what are we going to do? He says, we're riding, Greg. We rode double up at Moosehead Lake. And all the little tote roads go in and out of everywhere up there. You can go anywhere you want. There's almost there's no civilization whatsoever. He was able to take that bike and drive it everywhere just downshifting and not once did we get in any trouble we couldn't stop he knew how to stop that bike without brakes pretty impressive and i was on the back i was an idiot from massachusetts I had to... <laughs> <laughs> i'm up here i'm up here from massachusetts dirt bike and who said lake and he got no, no brakes on them they must do this all the time up here right? <laughs> But, you know that was those are just some fond memories that I can remember, and um, there's a ton of them. If you want to talk to me later, we'll more. Go with that front tire on the ground. Wow, it's Gloucester, Massachusetts. It looks different looking at it from this side. Yeah, it does. Uh, I'd just like to share a story of the first time I ever met Jamie Brown. I'd love to hear it. Yep. I was uh, I was hanging out on Middle Road at my buddy Ron 
Ron Hutchins over there. Yeah. You see the man in the orange hat. <laughs> yeah, he's heading out. Hanging out at his place in, in the backyard at the picnic table. One-eyed Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, an S10 blazer pulls up in the driveway. And he, you know, red S10 blazer, Jamie Brown get up. He, and he had a bird. He had a bird in his hand. Was it a dead bird? Yeah, it was a dead bird. Oh, okay. <laughs> He hit it on the way there, <laughs> and he backed up and went and retrieved it. I thought he so ran he, over he it again. He'd he, he come up to the picnic table and he says, Ronnie, what the hell is that? What the hell is it? Ronnie says, oh, that's a partridge. Yeah, it's a partridge. Yeah. And, you know. Jamie didn't know what that was? I, I don't know, apparently not. not. Uh. <laughs> it wasn't damaged much or anything. Yeah. And Ronnie, you know, Ron took the breasts out of it and yeah. cooked it on the campfire with a stick. And Delicious. He ate it. Yep. Well, that's the first time I met Jamie Brown, and I have I could uh, hundreds of stories from there. That I've only known. And you left. The, or we had the, you had the parrot or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Justin. 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 And you left the house or something. And that thing always used to talk so much shit to me. Whenever I'd cry, I'd be like, shut up, cry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he did. He did. I would always tell people cock sucking. <laughs> 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 I don't even call my own father dad anymore. It's Papa Roy. Papa Roy. That's you what know? he called him, right? Yeah. Papa Roy. Papa Roy. <laughs> it's like, and, and Roy, it, we're down there working for Papa Roy in Massachusetts. Yeah. You know? It just, uh, I, I could go on forever, but someone else's turn. Yeah. You know, he, 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 had, he is great great respect i always knew when you were coming up when we were when he was still living at our place because he said i, I gotta go see josh and his yeah. dad <laughs> yep lots oh, of yeah. good times yeah yep all right next he's thing. like you know i'm like i play softball blah 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 and he's like okay he's like yep i have a daughter you know this and that and i was like all right sweet let's go down to the fire bridge and blah 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 so me ronnie jimmy brown and josh get out and he's like, I'm gonna pitch, all right? <laughs> and he's sitting there half crunched over and he's like, watch this, all right? And I was like, Cat turn around backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Cigarette in his mouth. I mean, the whole time he's just, he's it's like, just yep, like yep. Then he gets my bag, he's like, watch this too, I'll hit a home run right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I gotta put my twisted tea down. And then from there on too, I have, I mean, he was such a great guy. Um, every time we go up to camp, I call him, Nicole, when are you coming up? I can't wait to see you, you know, it's just, and I miss him and I love him. I really do. I got hurt bad in the car accident. I weren't, I couldn't even walk or anything. I broke my femur. And uh, I lived in a uh, camp out on the Baron Road here. And I, I couldn't get my own private one. Uh, Jamie used to come in. Every other week and film it. Every other day, I mean, and film my fire was you split it, you cut it, and you. I mean, only way, only reason why I got through that one was because of Jamie. Good man. Yep. Yeah. Jamie loved motorcycles, and he had a crotch rocket when we first started going out. And oh, I'd never ridden on one. My mom didn't want me on it. Well. <laughs> One night we're going for a ride and he's like, well, we were with a bunch of friends and all of a sudden he just, he stands up and he's like, slide under. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, not sitting down until you go. I slid under and I didn't know the first thing about it. But he's like, we just hauled the wheelie. My mother was so mad. But that was saying, everybody's like, that's the coolest thing. I was like, maybe to you, wanting to me. <laughs> he did that with me when I was actually like 11 or 12 years old on like, was it the blue and black cross rocket? Yeah. That's the one he did it with me on. He actually did that with me when I was 11 on Wentworth Road. <laughs> that was the thing, but I learned how to ride. <laughs> Your family, how much we loved him and my whole family loved him and we've known him for 20 plus years. Over at Emden Pond, over at the association there, and um, 
you know, of course, he did lots of work for all of us. He did everything for us. We could call him, and he was always there. And uh, he was just the most gentle, friendly, nice guy. He didn't have a bad word to say about anybody. Um, he was the salt of the earth, and we just absolutely loved him. And my daughter and Colby were real close, and he used to take them out on his jet ski. Jet yes, ski, go to Yep, and they'd go tubing, and it was just a great, it was just a great time, great to know him, and we loved him, and, and he was doing some work for us more recently, and uh, Sarah and I were like, okay, we're coming up Friday, so if you could get it done by Friday, that'd be great, and then we'd get in at about 7 o'clock at night, and we'd go, it smells like smoke, and we're like, that's Jamie down there, taking some work done, and I'm like, well, you know what, I'm so glad that he was always the there. He was always late because we always got to see him and hang out with him. And he'd come upstairs and he'd get down on his haunches because he wouldn't sit in the park. I don't know why he wouldn't sit in our chairs. <laughs> he wasn't sitting down. It wasn't just your chair. And I was not sit down. I couldn't do it if I tried. I could not sit. Stuck. That was it, the only way it didn't hurt his back and was and sitting that way. Yeah. And we, yeah. loved it. we loved it that he was always late because we could see him and visit with him and hang out till whenever. And then, yeah, it was good. So gonna miss him a lot, an awful lot. And my girls are gonna miss him and so, thanks for this. It's great. Well yeah. about two o'clock in the morning. We drank together, we drank together. And uh, I didn't think he ever drank. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 and the wife. Uh, uh, first time we got to drinking together, we done a fist fight. And uh, the second time we got we got an old fist fight. Three times we've got a fist fight. This guy became one of my best friends. And, uh, um, you know, I miss him. He was a good man. Help anybody. Better fighter than me. I ain't all that. <laughs> he was a scrapper. Went to first roach up past Moosehead. And the kids, Jamie, Jeremy, and Justin, and Greg, you might have been with I us that there. time. And next thing I know, we get knocked on the back window because we had a window from the truck and a window into the cab of the truck where kids didn't have to be in seat belts. They were in the back of the truck on a mattress. And they would sleep in and whatever, but I'll knock on the window and Jamie goes, Justin has m and stuck up his nose. <laughs> stuck in his nose so come to find out they're all putting M&Ms up their nose and Justin was so little they couldn't get his out so they were melting. You remember that, Jeremy, you remember that, don't you? Yeah. 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 I don't know who first did it, but... I did it. You did it! Uh, <laughs> so... Moving right. Fun at him for a second. Well, sure. Pokemon's good. That's what it is. He's not going to mind. No. <laughs> You'll love it. So I've been part of this family for, I think, 18 years now. I say it'll be 17 in December, so 18 mm -hmm. years. Um, over the years, I've been more than welcome at your home. Um, all of your sons have become my family as well. But I even brought my friends and other sides of my family up to your house. Um, and maybe 10, 12 years ago, I think, I brought one of my best friends up here, Erica. And we went back to Portland where we were living, um, and our entire group of friends now know what the Uncle Jamie is. And it's when they just go, what? What'd you say? <laughs> like, when you don't want to hear what someone said, or like when you can't believe what they said, it's just, it's the voice yeah. with like the infliction. And I have, there's probably a group of 10 people that have never even met Uncle Jamie, <laughs> but know what the Uncle Jamie is. <laughs> 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 what was that person doing? Oh, they're yep. just doing the Uncle Jamie, don't worry about it. Yep. <laughs> the Uncle Jamie impression, uh, yep. Yeah. Or impersonation. Yeah. I'm gonna miss my little buddy, but you know what? You know what I love about him the most? Is when he asked me how to cut a tree down. He goes, do I cut it here? Well, here, I said, just start the chainsaw up and cut it. And that's how it went. <laughs> hey, man! Yeah. That's how it went. That's it. Yeah. That was the fastest way. way. Yeah. 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 Just the First, you gotta cut that yeah. chainsaw, right, John? <laughs> Holly, right Holly, where are you? Oh, I can't see you, Holly. Oh, there you are. Okay, are you ready? 
Hi, John. One of my best How are you? friends. Hi, uh, how, are you, how many times did we skip school? <laughs> <laughs> we would go riding in the pet from whatever he had. And a lot of times it wasn't good, but we had a good time. He taught me how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> I used to drive from the Smith's house up to so Art's house. No. <laughs> but every time that I needed him, he was always around. And I remember meeting him in second grade, I think. <laughs> so we've been friends ever since, so he'll be missed. The other Holly was talking about. He's my best friend for the last 18 years or so. I think we met. The winner of all six. Coming down the Snowmobile Trail by the way of bears and I see this guy stop. He got his headlight or flashlight and didn't have headlights in. If they did, he didn't own one. <laughs> so I stopped. He introduces himself, asks me where I'm going. I said, I don't know, I just moved up here. He said, Give me a minute, follow me. He takes off his backpack, pulls out a gallon milk jug. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What, what is it? It was mix, pre mixed coffee brandy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what you were right. <laughs> but, and I laughed. And, yeah, we swapped toys, da da da, and we took off for a ride. We ended up, I still don't, I want to find it just for now. <laughs> I do, but it was up. It was up in Kingfield, past Whitplay area, but it was like a half a mountain. It was a beautiful hill with a camp on it. Hold on. We had both been riding and drinking, so I said, Jamie, I'd stand on our running boards and just flop right backwards in that fresh snow and make snow angels. So we did. <laughs> And we both woke up there like that three hours later. The moon is still going down as the sun was coming up. <laughs> Jamie, wake up. <laughs> you go, oh, where are we? I, I'm gonna ask you that. <laughs> he goes, I know I'm going that way towards Emden Pond and you're going that way towards Kingfield. <laughs> and yeah, and then, yeah, after that, we, yeah. I love him. I'm gonna make him forever. Yeah, yeah, but Jamie always spoke highly and you guys fought like brothers and we did. We <laughs> like did. <brothers. laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a married couple. Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't know who, just like with John, I didn't know who was married to him, what, what was going on. Yeah, it was one of those situations, you guys were... were and I missed were, that, too. I go B, I said, you ain't strong enough to take this bullshit I gave him. Huh. Well, he gave me. So, <laughs> one interesting thing about snowmobiling and gaming, we got permission from the uh, Emden Pond, they can't come in that door, no. They can't go out that door either. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the Emden Snowmobile Club uh, has given permission on both the west side of the pond and the east side of the pond. We're going to have uh, a sign in memory of Jamie on the trail. Jamie used to volunteer to do trail dragging and stuff like that and grooming trails. And he loved snowmobiling, and so we had to get permission from the landowners, and the snowmobile club went along with it as long as we had permission. So David McKenna, who lives up on the hill over here, has his place. He said, Bruce and Ruth, you can put up 100 signs if you want to. Oh and he God. pointed out some of the places. So we'll have, when you're snowmobiling, there'll be a special spot that you can stop. and Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. Ruth. Yeah. Where's Molly? Colby. Oh, <laughs> The first time, my first, one of my first times snowmobiling at night with my dad, we were on the railroad bed and we were going like 55. I hit my first deer 
And he likes to go so fast that he was going so fast that he was so far in front of me that he had no idea that anything happened. And so we got up to the Solon Dam and I was like, I just hit a deer, I just hit a deer, like, is it dead, is it still there? And he was like, no, no, that thing definitely had to run away. And I was like, are you sure I don't dare drive back? And he was like, no, it's gotta be gone. So we turned around because my sled was fine. And uh, it was gone or whatever, but then we just drove home and we ended up keeping it from Grandma and Poppy for a little bit. <laughs> and, and they ended up finding out, but um, other than that, it went over pretty well. <laughs> Were there any dents in the sled? No, but it broke the hinge, like when you open the cowling. That's the only thing that happened. <laughs> Minor. Minor, exactly. <laughs> We're up, at, we're up at camp on Middle Road. Right. Jamie had his snowmobile. It was an MXC. <laughs> yeah. That one, right? The skis, I don't know, the skis were burned off or whatnot. The carbides are gone. Everything, you know. And he, he took the skis off of Ronnie's. Ronnie Hutchins. Remember? Right, exactly. Yeah, they, was, was, they were his skis to begin with. Yeah, they were his skis to begin with. So he took the skis off of that. He was swapping them over out in my, right out in my Make driveway, right way. in front of the camp. Funny boy, Joe. And I'm watching, <laughs> I'm in the camp, and I'm watching him. He's out there on his knees in the snow, going, nah, 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 nah. You know, you hear me? I go like this. I says to my Uncle Peter, I go, I go, watch this. I reach out of the mattress, I pull out my 20 gauge, I pull a shell in it, and I'm in the doorway and I just go, right? Jamie Brown goes just like this, he's on his knees, just like this, he just goes, he goes, he falls over the back, like he was shot, like he got shot, because he was, it, 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 it stopped him and scared him so much, it just, I just go, boom, and he just goes, he bitched you about that to me a couple of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that fucking dumb? That was, that was yeah. so funny. I, I, I had to get him, you know what I mean? You oh, put him down, get. working on it. Uh, Boom! Uh, oh, Jesus. Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight it's not my place to question, only God knows why. I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Singing hallelujah. Tonight.